Um, hello, welcome to episode three of uh, Tigers, Tigers, blah, blah, blah. Um, welcome from myself, uh, Luke Flanagan, and my co-host is Rich Walker. Now then. Now then. Uh, so yeah, as we say, third episode. Um, it's moving quite fast, isn't it, Rich? <laughs> it is, yeah. It's, uh, it's nice to have something to do. You know, end of the week, something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. It's, we've made it. We've done it Friday every time. I think the first one we think we did a Saturday, didn't we? Yeah, I think uh, so. And then we've done Friday the last two ones. So this, uh, very excited about this coming episode. I'm sure you are as well. Um, I am. I am indeed. Yeah, this is this is a a big one for uh, my 15 year old self because uh, indeed, as I, just like for us. Um, obviously, we used to stand next to each other in. Um, South Stand, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, on, on the terrace. Um, yeah, on uh, Boothry Park, and uh, yeah, this is the one of our both of our favourite players that we've managed to get on today. Still can't quite believe that we've got to do this. <laughs> um, but yeah, this uh, this will be our first proper um, ex City player guest. So we hope you enjoy, um, and we'll be back very shortly. So we said episode three, Tigers, Tigers, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we'd like to welcome a very special guest uh, that we've got today. Um, this this player has over 300 league appearances in his career, over 80 goals, and you've previously played for, and you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, Lobby, um, Kettering Town, Leicester City, Hull City, obviously the important one, Northampton <laughs> Town, <laughs> Northampton Town, Notts County, Southend United, Boston United, and Cork City. That's correct, yeah. Good start. That's all of the correct. So, uh, career was 97 to 2008 uh, when you retired and moved into other ventures, which we might get onto later. Um, and your, uh, you were Hull City's record signing in 2001 uh, for £250,000. Um, and you are somebody who I think still um, has got a lot of kind of association with City. I think you, you still got uh, kind of ties around here and stuff. And yeah, um, well, I'm I'm here now as we, you know, as, during lockdown. So of all the places, I'm in Hull. So uh, oh, that's brilliant. Uh, you're right. Yeah, you know, it's a, a, a city that is very close to my heart, and uh, you know, I, I, as we're sure we get onto, I, I absolutely love my time here. That's brilliant. Um, so thank you for joining us, Laurie Dudfield. Um, so I'm going to pass over to my co-host Rich. I'm going to let you start the questions, Richard Walker. Yeah, sure. Girls. I was going to say. Um... Laurie was uh, one of the first players whose name I had on the back of my shirt as a kid. So um, to be able to speak to you, Laurie, I, you know, we appreciate it and we appreciate you giving the time to us. Um, and just before we move up, like get on to your, your, your time with City, just to give a bit of context to the move. Um, like Luke said, you played for Leicester, you've broken through there uh, the tail end of 99, 2000. What was what was that like coming through at Leicester at that time? Because they had a decent side. Um, you know, Martin O'Neill was the manager and um, yeah. Stan Collymore, um, Lennon and Savage, and the likes of Steve Walsh were there. What was that like coming through there and kind of cutting your teeth as a, a young pro? Oh, it was um, an unbelievable experience. It was, um, you know, a big part of the, the whole football thing for me is that, that, you know, without sounding too old, that was when football was football to me. You know, it wasn't in this <laughs> yeah. big kind of bubble that it is now yeah um, so for me you know I went into Leicester I was a football geek as a as a kid you know I was a kid that at 13 14 was sub for his Sunday team and but was writing letters to all the Premier League players and and all this stuff and you know getting signed photographs back and all that and <laughs> um, and one of my um it's a bit boring really but I'll, I'll tell you anyway one of my biggest uh, kind of things as a kid is I wrote a letter to Tony Cotty amongst 250 of us but I was a West Ham fan and um, so I made my debut for Leicester um, in 2000 but I, I came, come on for um, Tony oh, so did it was you? a massive moment for me and it wasn't until about great. it wasn't until about three years ago my mum did what all mums do here's a bag of crap that you've got you know that, that you've been keeping around the house for years so I had to look at it and I was like a little kid all over again and it had these 250 letters and signed photographs and all these Premier League players and foreign internationals, all this stuff, and and I came across the Tony uh, Tony Cotty one, and so I put that now with my debut shirt because it, it meant a lot to me. You know, I was writing a letter to him as a fourteen year old kid trying to get into the the mindset of what it is to uh, to be a professional, and so to then be playing with people like him and as you say, Stan Collymore. Although I have I played in the reserves with him, I never actually 
uh, played with him. I, I owe him a huge gratitude because I made my debut after his ankle got smashed up at Derby. <laughs> so, um, so st- <laughs> not good memories for Stan, but it no. was, um, <laughs> I remember getting on the bus the afterwards. Way and, you, didn't it? The yeah, way I remember getting on the bus afterwards and Martin said, uh, you know, Stan's gone down injured and obviously a serious injury and cut on the bus. He went, make sure you're ready for next week. And it was the most nervous, but also the 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 best experience of my life in in footballing terms because um it, you just you know like you say that 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 squad then other than what Leicester have done in recent terms that squad was was a fantastic squad with yeah I mean say, Lenny it, Sav there were some um, great players there weren't they yeah there, it was it was a, a fantastic Muzzy, is it, was there as well I was about it? to yeah, say Muzzy, Muzzy is it I was about to say Muzzy, Muzzy it's funny with Muzzy great. because he doesn't you know he had a great career he um, played internationally i think just because his name sounded turkish but um, <laughs> he, no, he, but he, he was brilliant. i mean not only was he one of the nicest guys going was he that helped me when i was on loan you know genuinely would take you to one side how's it going how'd you do this week blah 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 but also um he was just a, a, probably a, a fantastic one of the most fantastic players that i've played with and been been lucky enough to play with and probably didn't do himself justice I, th- I think he was a lot better you know he had a great career mm. but he was next level stuff but just couldn't quite break through for whatever reasons you know I mean to be in that kind of that yeah. main man he was got but, some outstanding goals didn't he and some of, some of the like on his day it was just some of the oh, stuff technically he was as good as it gets well, um, it? Yeah. yeah but but you know joking aside about the turkey thing he went you know, I remember him saying he went away with Turkey for the first time. Couldn't understand the word anybody was saying, and they were just <laughs> Turkey, as you'd expect. Um, but you know, played the World Cup, and you, mm. you can't argue with that he was a, he was a very very special player, and and there was a number of them throughout that squad. So uh, yeah, I was I was really uh, really lucky to be involved with that. Well, that's brilliant. Um, you went out on loan a couple of times when you were at Leicester before you moved to City as well, didn't you? Oh, I had the um, my first loan move. Um, and this is no disrespect to Lincoln whatsoever. I had <laughs> no, d- worst... please disrespect please, Lincoln. Please, do. please disrespect Lincoln. <laughs> I had the worst loan spell you've ever you've ever known. I remember my debut. Um, do you remember big Andy Morrison? Who um, he was allowed to play the area siren for, was I think? Yeah, well, oh, no, that wasn't. That was um... well. He was and... big Andy Morrison was at um, Blackpool, and he was on loan from Man City. So he's like one of Man, and he he effectively was this huge sweaty big center up. <laughs> so I'm on the bench for my my uh, debut for Lincoln and Gavin Gordon of you guys are yeah, yeah. um Gavin Gordon the ball's got up to him on the halfway line and I've just seen this Andy Morrison elbow him in the back of the head and I, I thought he's dead I actually <laughs> thought he's not injured he's dead so he's on the floor for the, it's the first time I've ever seen like these you know the cartoon little birds around his head and you're thinking <laughs> this is serious and, and all I'm thinking is get up because I'm going to have to come on to this <laughs> so um, he gets carried off and um, this is no word of a lie I've, the ball, the first touch in football for Lincoln is ball's got played into the halfway yeah. line and all I've heard is Andy Morrison just running towards me grunting going <laughs> like old school this is professional football and um He's coming towards me, and I'm thinking, "Shit!" Oh, sorry. If I'm swearing, no, you're I'm thinking, you "Oh no, what, what am I going to do?" Swear. It's okay. We've got explicit on the oh, podcast, no. so don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking, "Shit!" What am I going to do? And um, so I've turned and done the most mature thing that I can think of, which is kick the ball 40 yards and just sprinted after it, <laughs> so I didn't get hit. And and I was just like, "This is a baptism of fire." And um, then I, so I think I joined on the Friday and. Um, had that on the Saturday. Went in training on the Monday. We uh, Phil Stamp was in charge. We spent two and a half hours just sprinting after the ball. And if I could keep it in for a throw in <laughs> instead of going out for a goal <laughs> kick, it was deemed a success. <laughs> two and a half hours of that, and I was just like, "This month can cannot go quick <laughs> enough." And um, yeah, I had a I had a month there. It was interesting. I played a few games. Got to you know, it definitely made me for later in my career, but. It wasn't a fond period, um, and um, yeah, I went back after a month. It was not. I, I don't think they were desperate to keep me, and I certainly wasn't desperate <laughs> to uh, to stay. It was, it was probably something where you thought, "Well, I'm going to work hard as so and try and get either a loan somewhere else a bit higher, or be actually starting the Leicester team." Definitely, because yeah. 
because not long afterwards, Chesterfield um, came in for me, and yeah. um, and that went that went well for you there, didn't it? it yeah, I had a yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I had a fantastic spell there. My, although my my big problem with Chesterfield is, and I think it's been enough time to say this now, that was the year that they got done for all the bunks. Oh, so right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Brown paper, you know, the envelopes were coming out, cash in hands. Yeah. I think every five games it doubled. So we were on about twenty two games unbeaten. So anyway, so I've come in on loan, and. I, I've heard about these, you know, these bonuses, shall we say, that purportedly, you know, were meant to have happened. And um, I'm thinking, oh, this is great, you know, <laughs> get a bit of this, that's fine. So we've won the game and the next morning, expecting to come in and find a brown paper envelope. And what I actually found was Graham Bean and the police had raided the office. <laughs> and we, uh, we never got it. So, <laughs> so um, probably yeah, a good thing. Great stuff. Yeah, well, probably just as well. I mean, obviously, I, being the person I am, I'd have handed it back straight away. Yeah, obviously. sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll believe, yeah. But no, listen, it was joking aside. We, they got um, penalised points for that and uh, for whatever was going on. I actually genuinely don't know what's going on because, as I say, um, I'd come into it later on. But um, there was some payment somewhere around the club going on. It won't surprise you because the owner at the time, I would think was that Darren Brown mm. and, uh, you know, a lot of stuff going about. But, on the pitch, I gotta say, what a great squad! What a, a fantastic uh, team environment, and I just absolutely loved it. Some great players um, that I some that I still keep in touch with today, and uh, and we got promoted even after the did, uh, deducted points. Yeah, we you league two champions, weren't you that season? Well, technically, but they got I think got demoted to third no, did afterwards they? Right. Um, because the points they took ten points off. But yeah, yeah, um, but it was fantastic, and it, it, it kind of awaken me to what first team football was you know I, I didn't start every week I was starting and then they pulled me out at the right times you know because at, th- at that time when you're at Leicester I was playing once every three weeks <laughs> yeah. in a reserve game it wasn't like it is now I mean the good thing for me is that it's not like now with the 23s which is almost like right you have the ball we'll have the ball you know it's work on formation it's for me that's not real football it's not the pace isn't there when I was playing the reserves you know, we'd have. I remember playing for a twenty thousand in a reserve game against Liverpool. Robbie Fowler played, mm. and it was proper. You know, Paul Williams. When I played uh, Derby, one of my first reserve games, Paul Williams was talking to me, saying, "This ball's going to come into you, and I'm going to nip in front of you and get it." And, <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, all right." And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> they're, you know, they're what taught me to to um, to to be a footballer. Really, that's that, what improved me. That competitive environment. Yeah, so to, to have a bit of that for myself with the first team and to feel like I was, you know, an important part of that as well, you know, in, in the running. I think I had three months or maybe even nearly four months at Chesterfield. And I was fully expecting to, you know, to get promoted and to sign there. And then I, I'd i been away. I'd been, I went on holiday and um, I got a phone call from Leicester. This is how old I am. It wasn't, I don't even think mobiles were properly... <laughs> You know, around there. I got, they rang the home phone. No word of a lie. They rang the home phone and said, "Where have you been?" And I said, "Oh, I've been away." And they said, "Well, less uh, whole city uh, bid a quarter of a million for you last week." And I was like, "Yeah, all right." And they were like, "No, they, they have." And at that point, I'm thinking, you know, "Where's Hull?" <laughs> you know, I, I've never really been out of Kettering in a Leicester in my life. And um, I, you know, I, I, the next, very next day, I was up in Hull and, and just loved it from that moment. Really, I've. Um... I've read the interviews that you've done um, for Rich Garden when he was writing The Decade. Yeah. Um, and I think you said several times over in a lot of different places that um, you didn't really feel the pressure of signing, you know, being the record signing. It was the first time City had paid that much for a player since Peter Swan, like 12 or 13 years ago. Yeah. And I know you said that the pressure didn't get to you. Um, so... At 21, how did that feel? If it wasn't pressure, what what was that like to to know that this club, who was you know ready to throw the the checkbook at getting out the the, the bottom tier, rated you that highly that they would break the the transfer record for you? Well, honestly, and I don't think I've ever said this, but I I um my my first thought was I don't feel like I'm worth it. Not because I didn't think I was a good enough player to, but I'd never had a, a value. Do you know what I mean? So, and it was yeah. not like it is now where you play five games and you could be on 10 grand a week. I mean, it's not, it's, we're talking about a different football, a different era. So it was almost like, well, that's fantastic that the club value me that and it made me feel special. And the biggest thing that made me was proud. I was proud that, I, you know, I was a record signing. It, it was, it was nice to have that accolade, but I've never really been a, 
you know, the, the, the small things like that are not, you know, I don't walk around. I never walked around, you know, my own shirt and name on the back saying I'm Laurie. You know, that's just yeah. not me. No, Rich did that. He, I, he so I like to go back yeah, I did. I did that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just like to go a bit more, not under the radar, but just keep myself to myself mm. and, and hope that my football does the talking. So I was never really bothered about it. I, did, I genuinely didn't feel the pressure. And I think because it was my first move um, and I had come from Leicester, in my head, I still, you know, it was a great honour, but I still had a lot of work to do because I hadn't played regular football. Yeah, yeah. So there's, an, there's a lot for you to, to do to live up to that then. Yeah, but it, I was mean, an, it, it was an exciting thing for you rather than something you were counting Definitely, because, it, it, you know, in between my Premier League debut and a couple of other appearances, I, you know, we're probably talking a year. Martin had left, Peter Taylor had taken over, and I thought, this is absolutely fantastic for me. England and the 21 manager or had been in charge in the national team uh, as well. Um, absolute reputation for working with young players. This, is, this couldn't have worked out better for me. I'm a young player coming through. I'm one of the, you know, I think I'm one of the up and coming players at Leicester, and um, came in the first day, signed Trevor Benjamin. <laughs> um, it just, and then his very first pre-season game, I remember, we played Wickham away. Um, Stan scored, Adi Akinbai scored, and I scored the third. And never played a single uh, a single minute pre-season after that for the first team. So. I just knew that for whatever reason, he just, you know what? And I love Peter. You know, we'll come on to that later when he comes to Hull. Yeah, yeah. I love Peter, but it just was clear that I wasn't his player mm. and was never going to be. So, so you know, so there's a year in between this coming to Hull. And so I took it as a fresh start. I wanted to, I was never happy not playing. Not, not to cause problems, but I just wanted to play football. I didn't want to cheat anyone. I didn't want to get paid for, you know, I wanted to, earn my money and earn my spot and, and that was you know I was a kind of 100% work rate kind of guy and if if I had a bad game I didn't need anybody to tell me I would go home and beat myself up more than anybody mm. else would because you, you had a great start to the career so the first game was what uh, Exeter away Exeter yeah Exeter, 3-1 yeah. win because that yep. was a great day in the sunshine I think you went didn't you Rich to that it was, I, I was there yeah, yeah. Um, that was a good day. I think we were. I believe did we go one down? Yeah, you did. I think we might yeah. have one of them. Yeah, we went one down, and um, then it, we came back because they, they um, it was, it, there was there was a bit of. Uh, I saw it on Twitter. Obviously, we've got a tigers um, tigers blar. It is on Twitter, but I asked people last night. I didn't say that you were coming on because I didn't want to jinx it. <laughs> but I also didn't didn't want to just sort of um, just go. Oh well, just ask questions to. To this player, I wanted like you know, yeah. kind of um, memories of um, of that season more than anything else. Um, and yeah. somebody actually said they they remembered that that game really well because they weren't none of the fans were allowed in pubs before. Was that right, Rich? I was fifteen at the time, mate. I wasn't allowed in anyway. <laughs> I didn't know if you went in some of the some of the apparently no. some of the boozers around because Man City had been there the week before. And apparently they'd closed it all, so fans had to go to the game. And obviously, I think the mood was a little bit down with the, oh, we'll get one down early on. But then, obviously, the the, yeah. the, the game turned and you scored on your debut, didn't you? Yeah, and I remember that goal like it was yesterday. It was, um, you know, I'd had a shot before when it came, got rebounded. And... That was nice, that okay. first effort on goal as it well. Was, that yeah, had gone in. You know, I that thought the first night, one was yeah. going, yeah. Um. And I, yeah, I remember it like it was just there. And I, I still remember it still since because Gary Alexander was forever taking the piss out of me for my celebration afterwards <laughs> because I was so uh, so into it. Do you know yeah. I mean, it just meant so much to me on that first game. And and the other funny story of that is we had an assistant called um, Kevin Smith, who was assistant manager to um, to Brian. Yeah. And I just remember after the preseason games and after training, nobody really said anything mm-hmm. to me. Um, but I. I I wasn't the best trainer. I'd always work hard, but I wasn't the best trainer. I just lived for games. And, and Mike Edwards is forever telling me that, um, you know, how bad a trainer I was. <laughs> but anyway, uh, all I remember is I've scored the goal. I think I, I might have megged somebody on the. I think I took somebody on, turned around, they're behind me, megged them, uh, created a chance and that. I was just kind of getting into a groove. And I just remember coming off at the end of the game, winning 3-1 and Kevin Smith saying, fucking hell, you, you've left some in the tank, haven't you? This <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it was it was nice memories, nice memories. Um, so obviously your city career got off to a great start, and um, I don't know if this was something you was going to ask Rich, but 
the, the 2001 2 season got off so well um, to the start, yeah. then it kind of fell away a little bit. Yeah, I mean, what I wanted to ask Larry was how much do you think that that pre season had kind of played into um, the way that the, the following season went? You know, 2001 2, your first year with us. Um, you know, there'd been a hell of a lot of turnover in terms of who come in and who'd gone out and the, the team had lost a lot of characters and people that were well liked and key yeah. parts of the team. Um, and then just as many had come through and not an awful lot of players that City signed that summer had a, you know, particularly sterling career with us, you know, the likes of um, like Matt Glennon came in and I remember he eventually lost his yep. place in the team to Muzzy mm. Um Ben Petty, Nicky Mullen, Matt Bloomer, you know, all new centre halves. And meanwhile, you had guys like Mark Greaves, who were having played well for City in the previous years, local lad on the outside. So, do you think that that maybe had an effect on the way that the season went? Um, I, I, I don't think so. Um, I do agree. I mean, Greaves is a big mate of mine. So, we always have this conversation. And um, Greaves is very much of the opinion that. You know, there didn't need to be 13 new signings. Mm. You know, there yeah. needed to be five new signings. Yeah. And, and I would agree with that. Um, but I think Adam was new in the game as well and was making a name for himself as a chairman and, you know, what really wanted to go for it and knew that the new ground was uh, was was in the, on the horizon. Uh, I've got to tell you a story about Greasy just before we go on, though. Um, first day ever at Hull City. We'd gone in, got the, uh, got the kit and... Um, we all sat around a table for training and there's like all oh, 13 new lads. You know, we were all in the hotel. So I'd met some of them, didn't know any of them other than Ryan Williams. So we sat down at the table and then there's like four grabs and a few others, because although they, some of them didn't have, weren't going to stay, they still had a contract, some of them. So grabs yeah. would be a prime example. So there's about five or six on the other table from the previous year who had done fantastic, you know? Um, and I've never met Grease at this point. So there's a signed shirt or a shirt that needs signing, should I say. And Grease has passed it to his boys. And it, just in front of us, 13, and he didn't know any of us, just chucked it on the middle of the table. And the first thing he's ever said to any of us is, yeah, I may as well get the reserves to sign it as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're all like, who is this dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> and I can say that because he's like a great mate of mine now. But I, and I always think back to that first day at Hall. Just, but it was great because it did start to break down any issues that might have been and there was some you know there was some bitterness is the right word but there's a lot of people that felt unhappy they they, they've they been pushed the down spots, brownie though, probably a, the, the... david brown probably a prime yeah. example you know somebody yeah. who could have played a role as well yeah. um so um you know but there was never never a problem with us with me you know i get on with i've seen brownie um obviously during our careers afterwards and and since then and never had a problem but um yeah just those kind of things i, I think i think um it did become a problem in terms of maybe we, we as a club could have managed it better. And we certainly could have utilized people like Braps because I remember being at York away mm. on a pissing down Tuesday night with a midfield four. I think it's famous now, isn't it? Of Ryan Williams, David Beresford. Um, and uh, I think Theo and uh, I forget who the other, whoever it was. And anyway, so really Julian Johnson, Johnson, Julian yeah, Johnson, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so whoever it was, we, we had a really attacking four. It might even have been sneaks by them, but oh, anyway. <laughs> um, so, so anyways, we, we had that, you know, really attacking four got absolutely battered. And that's when you need yeah, to go. Yeah, dig in players. Too, isn't I mean, it's just the yeah, win and, ugly, and I think the, win ugly as, games kind of thing. That, that's probably the one thing that I would say we didn't have. We didn't have um, somebody that fear factor. Like, I'm a bit old school. I, I think you need a manager on the pitch. I, I don't think there's many of them about mm. now. Especially, think, low, especially lower down the leagues, I think it is, you know, hugely yeah, important. I think you needed someone like Brab saying, you know, if you're not doing this right, I'm going to fucking rip your head off. Do you know what I mean? Excuse yeah. Me. But I think we needed that. And I think that I would have reacted to that because I would have been scared of him. You know, be scared of <laughs> yeah. um, but I do think he could have had a really good um, uh, role to play for that. And, um, and unfortunately, you know, whatever happened, happened, a club decision. And, and we didn't utilise some players that, that could have really... Um, had a positive effect on the team. I think it's a, it's like almost like a, if you, you compare something like Man City today, they've got so many players, haven't they, for different positions? But they have yeah. they have like the the rotation is used so well to make sure players are fresh or they play the right players for the right game. Do you think it was more a case of of Brian Little saying, "Well, no, this is this is my team. I'm going to stick with it, come what may," because we've signed all these players. We feel like we have to play them all. 
I'd fancy this player over this player and he didn't kind of think but, maybe he didn't I play think, the, the the right players for the right game or do you just think it was kind of just one of those things where I, I think we let Brian ultimately we let Brian down you know I, I love Brian I've seen him a number of times since and he's always you know welcomes me mm. um you know, one of the big things, I don't actually know if I was Brian signing, if I'm honest. I think I was probably Adam signing. I think that's right. probably... Interesting. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I have no nothing to back that up with. So um, you haven't worked with, with Brian at Leicester previously? No, I hadn't worked with him at Leicester. He would have had contacts at Leicester, obviously. But, yeah. Um, you know, that, that was, you know, that would be my guess. Um, so I think that... But Brian never treated me like that. He was a, a proper players manager mm. and he would have done anything for his players and myself included. And, and he, he was brilliant to me. And I, I just absolutely loved him. One of the best managers I've ever had. Um, but that was probably his fault as well. Like, we let him down and he would still defend the players. He would still look after us. And it's now pretty famous. He got sacked after, I think we lost at home to maybe South End or someone on the Friday night. Uh, Mac- Macclesfield, Macclesfield, I think. They were a particular, and, bo- um, particular bogey team at the time, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. And he, he gave us the weekend off, obviously. And um, that didn't go down well with Adam. Mm. And, and he got sacked. But, but going back... Um, yeah, I, th- I think we let him down in the sense that, again, going down to that experience, we, we had 13 young players that, you know, Matty Glennon, um, myself, um, Gary Alexander, we, we hadn't played, you know, three games a week. And that's not an excuse. I, I hate using that as an excuse in saying that we weren't fit enough. It's not about fitness. It's like when when somebody comes into a new job and, you know, they all say, oh, they're, they're not fit enough. And then the new manager comes in the first game, oh, they're fitter now. There's no way they're <laughs> That's a massive misconception, I always think. It's like, yes, if it's you get a new manager, the motivation, yeah, yeah. if you get a new manager coming in and he goes, yeah, they're not fit, these players, it's like, that's not the case, is it? It's not like they've just been, you know, eating McDonald's and, and not training for, for six months and that's why the results have been going bad. It's just that they then maybe need just a change of the routine of what, what's gone on, exactly, uh, different yeah. types of training. And I, yeah. And I think that we you manage you know, that, motivation yeah. in, in itself uh, as well, yeah. isn't it? Of course, you're going to yeah, and that does bring the scare factor then. as well. You know, you, yeah. you've got a new manager and you're all fighting for your future. Mm. Now, so we we did let Brian down in that respect, um, and I know that it, it hit everyone hard. But you know, we we had come from reserve in football. I don't think everybody was, you know, and that is where your Brabs and and, and Brownies would have come in handy. I mean, for certain games, because you look at Rodney Rowe. Rodney Rowe wasn't. You know, Rodgers wasn't particularly part of the furniture. You know, he sub a lot, but he came on and had a big part to play that season. So there were games that he, you know, Michael Reddy came in and, and played games, yeah. scored goals. John Walters, the following, you know, so there's just, yeah. there was players that came in. But, um, yeah, I just I just think for whatever reason, we all kind of burned out for, you know, whatever that may be. And we just couldn't really get out of it. So we went from third to, I think, 13th, didn't we? Yeah, finished it. Like a that, real travesty, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was because, you know, before Christmas, some of the football that that side played was was fantastic. Mm. And I think part of, you know, a big part of that was the threat that um, you and Gary Alexander had together up top. You know, you were both quite different strikers. Yeah. Gary was the proper number nine, whereas you used to run the channels. I, I remember from South Stand Terrace watching you and you seemed to get to the goal line with ease. You could get around the back of defenders and then cut across back for, you know, on running players of Gary to, who was, you know, holding his position. And you just seemed to do it like, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm having you today. Um, I think the how, funny thing how... about that is that we worked, um, well, we hadn't worked together before, should I say, and then came in and we did no work really on a partnership as such. So then get to Christmas and or to start December, Gary's got, I think, 19 before Christmas. I think I've got 10 mm. um, before Christmas. And then we have a couple of bad games as a team. And then we start working. Brian starts working on, you know, forward play <laughs> and being Gaz. And put it, and I don't think Gaz scored all season after that. I don't think the Ivers really did. But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it just it's funny. How you, it just goes to show you can put everything, you know, on a plate. You can tell everyone what to do. And that sometimes... You need to leave things just to happen naturally, organically. Yeah, and, and you, you can, you can, yeah, can yeah. overcoach. I think sometimes, can't you? I just think with that, you, you just had a natural understanding. You two as a forward too, like you. you... I, I put the ball in the box. Yeah, you know, I'd yeah. love to say I put it on Gary's head. I didn't. <laughs> I put the ball in the box. What felt right, <laughs> and Gary was there. So it's more credit to him than me. It but, is ironic that, though, um, isn't it? That when he started to work on you two working as a pairing, then you didn't score. It was just like just let you be free yeah. and express yourself as you as you needed to, and and it worked. So why why kind of fix it? I don't know. That seems a bit awful. so. Yeah. So it was just it was tough. We all felt we let him down, and and I remember hearing um, on the news. Mm. 
Um, that's how we all heard on the Friday night, I think it was Saturday morning, that he'd been sacked and, and we were gutted. I, you know, we all thought we'd let him down and we were, we were disappointed. Um, I think, if you give us one second, Laurie, I think I'm going to send you just an, another recording link. Um, and I think sure. if we then go on to, obviously we, it's a good way to, to end if we're just talking about um, Brian then being uh, relieved of duties, if we then go on to, to Jan and then uh, wherever we go from there. Um, so we'll be, sure. be back in one second. Should, no shouldn't way. take long on Jan. <laughs> well, I'll get ready to use the bleeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be back in a, right. back in a second. Yeah. Right. Well, welcome back, uh, and we're uh, we've just finished Bill's tenure. Uh, still to our guest, by uh, which is Laurie Dudfield. Um, and we were just talking about when you heard the news, Laurie, um, when when Brian was uh, when Brian had, had lost the job. Um, what was your first reaction? Uh, other than obviously you'd said before that you you felt you'd let him down. I was um, devastated. Uh, you know, there's and I know that we all felt the same. We felt we let him down. Mm. Um, we knew and we'd shown already that season, particularly at home. Obviously, away seemed to be a bit rocky, you know, but. Um, we, we knew that we were a better team. We knew that we had some good players. Mm. Um, and we knew we were underperforming. Um, like anything, you, you know, you try and find ways to get out, but we couldn't. And upon hearing, obviously, they left, I was just devastated because, you know, he took that that faith in me. You know, whether whether he, I was his signing or Adams, whatever it may have been, you know, he played me. He um, helped me personally, you know, with him being a forward back in the day, worked with me closely. And I just had nothing but respect for him, and um, mm. um, and it was it was just a, a bad bad day, and and probably up to that point one of the the worst days of my career in terms of disappointment, you know, all around. Yeah, how quickly mm. once once that's happened, you know, and you you've got the disappointment, you know, a man that you like personally has has lost his job, and obviously you feel accountable for it in in some part because you're part of the team that you know he picked and what have you. How quickly? Once something like that has happened, you start to turn your attentions to who might be coming in next and, and what that means for, you know, your place in the team. Um, pretty quick. You know, it's still in the back of your mind, obviously. Um, my four, first thoughts were I wanted to ring Brian and apologise um, and thank him for everything he'd done for me. And then you do start to, um, you know, Brian was great. Um, I, can ima- I can imagine to... that he would be, you know, just saying to you, it was completely not your fault because he did seem like a, a lovely bloke. Mm. You know, he'd always defend the players, wouldn't he? Yeah. He, he was, he'd always take the blame. As I say, so. he's the ultimate players manager and would do anything for his players. And, mm. you know, ultimately, if, if, if somebody was attacking his players, he'd, he would have took the fall for it. And, and that's what he did. Yeah. Mm. You know, he, he went down. And I remember um, speaking to Brian uh, only about a year ago at the KC and... And he told me that um, that Adam wrote him a really nice letter. It was about ten years later. Wrote him a, a really nice letter saying, "I was new to the game. In hindsight, I wish I hadn't mm. done it. I do apologise how it happened, and we could have worked together. And thank you for everything. You know, a really nice letter, which is a testament yes, to both. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, um, uh, and I've got to say, during this period, you know, Adam, wh- whatever people think of Adam, and I would imagine he's hugely popular. Certainly with us. I, I don't know if he is with us. Yeah. Yeah. I. I love it. You know, I went. I saw him a few weeks ago uh, for the first time in years, and literally ten years probably. Mm-hmm. But um, he invited me in, so I went for a coffee with him, and you know, just everything he said to me from the first moment I met him, he backed up. And I don't think there's many people that are like that. So, I mean, he's, you yeah. know, we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to go up. We're going to go and get a new stadium. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. And he was so driven as to what you know, young and dynamic as a chairman, as to what he was going to do. Um, I was just like in awe. It was he, so. I've got to give him credit. He was absolutely fantastic. I used to love listening to him when he'd come on the radio with Burnsy, and, you know Alex Burgess at the time, and whoever was interviewing him. Whatever Pearson said, it, you just used to get this kind of like surge of adrenaline almost because you knew that he was so passionate about driving us forward, and whatever he said, you knew that yeah. he was going to do his utmost mm. to to make that come to pass. Um, one hundred percent, and and, that and never changed. coming back and and you know what have you? Um, I think some people might, um, you know, take points off him for his tenure. Um, but I I really enjoyed you know his time there and have nothing but um, you know praise for the for his uh, his time as chairman. 
Definitely, definitely. Sorry, Matt, did I drop out then? Uh, it was a tiny little bit. It's just a little bit of the signal. Yeah. I think but you're back. You're back. You're back. Clear. All right. Now. I think I was probably. Um, I think I was waffling anyway. So, <laughs> so Brian, no, that, that's what a podcast is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Brian's gone, and and Billy Russell came in. Uh, te- it's, it's the caretaker. And we had that uh, one fantastic winner at home to Mansfield, um, which is you know, it seemed like. Um, almost like the pressure had been released a little bit. Um, you know, the, the football is expressive and expansive again, but that was the last home win. And eventually, Jan Mulby comes in from Kidderminster. Um, what was that like for you when Jan came in? Um, I know he said that he looked at the squad and said that he wanted you and Gary um, and then didn't sign any strikers in, in the summer. Um, so what was that like when, when Jan came in? How, how, how did you feel about well, that? Well, First and foremost, as I said before at the start of the podcast, you know, I was a huge football geek as a kid. So, yeah, yeah you hear Jan Mulby, you're thinking, Can hell, Jan Mulby's going to be my manager. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, you know, it, what a great player. So, I mean, you come in and he comes in on the first day and <clears throat> he's got um, this aura about him, you know, this arrogance. But, in, in, you know, it can be taken in a good way at times. Equally, when things are not going well, it can, I can see why people, it winds them up. But, had this arrogance about him. I'm Jan Mulby. I've done this. I've won, you know, and, and he could back it up. Um, he was honest ish to me, honest enough straight away. As you say, you know, we're going to keep him going, but we're going to get rid of everyone. But I, I didn't need to hear that. I mean, tell me about my position. I don't need to hear about my mates that are going and you yeah. know, all this stuff. It's that's, that's a work call. That's his call to make. Seems unnecessary. You know, there's, there's a way to yeah. do it. Yeah. So, um, but that's great. You know, personally, you want to hear that. I, um, a big problem I had is I despise, and I, I I would say that I pretty much get on with anyone, but I despised his little right hand man Gary Barnett with a passion. <laughs> he was an untrustworthy. Was like his little mo? And was he? Um, this like he's grassing yeah, up. He, and... he, the thing with Gary is that he, he was he was quite um quite likable to your face, uh, you know, as you can imagine. And then, but then stuff would happen behind the scenes, and it was coming from him, being driven by him, and. And I didn't like that. I, you know, if I was poor, I knew I was poor. If I had had a poor game, I need him to come and tell me. I don't need him to say, oh, yeah, well done. And then, oh, he was shit today. <laughs> and, blah, 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 blah. and it wasn't even so much about the games. It was more stuff around that, uh, you know, away from mm. that. And, um, yeah, it, it was it was disappointing. I, Jan was, I've got a funny story about Jan. Though. When we, so we get through to the end of the season, obviously, um, and we come in at pre-season and Jan made it so that everybody had to come in and do three three sessions a week during the off-season as well. So I'd never seen that. Before. And this was going back to the fitness so concern, it was, wasn't it? You know, it wasn't like yeah, he was trying to exactly hammer on this same. point that you weren't fit enough, like proving it by giving which, you Which I understand, again, but with the greatest respect, look at Exhibit A. Mm. So, I mean, we've got... Jab <laughs> home, <laughs> taken over. I, you, could, you think can't be fit. He's walking example, you know, that, it, that you don't need to be, you know, you can be fit, you know, we don't need to be marathon yeah. runners, we've got to yeah. be football fit, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So, I don't know, we, he got us in doing swimming, and he was big on swimming because he could punch, <laughs> simple as that. So, but he didn't You've got to watch in. the knees. He didn't come in for one session. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> so, so we get in um, pretty soon, Gary Barnett's doing it, we're at David Lloyd up at um, Kingswood, in the outdoor pool. So we're all coming in, you know, everyone's a bit moaning that there's someone that can't go away and has come back early and all that. And, you know, and whatever you think, I, I do think that kind of off seasons is your chance to of course, recharge. Yeah. I mean, keep yourself in good you need some down condition. After, but, after yeah. you've had a yeah. disappointing season, you can't, you can't just go straight into the next one, can you? Yeah. I understand why a lot of people will say, well, that's bullshit. You know, we, we, we get them straight back in, but that doesn't help anyone long term. I mean, you, you've got to get over positives and disappointments. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So, um, so anyway, so um, get away from the building, change the scenery, etc. So we've come in for this anyway. And then it's come to the first day of pre-season. Now, Jan would have us doing three sessions a day straight away. And we would be in the pool at seven o'clock in the morning. I forget where the pool was, but it wasn't David Lloyd at this point. We'd move somewhere else near Boothry Park, one of the old swimming baths. It'll be the old now, the new ones, won't it? It'll be all but have. It, possibly, yeah. 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 But it was... Um, we were, um, uh, what I haven't said at this point is I am, without doubt, the worst. I mean, I can't even swim. I'm like, uh, <laughs> honestly, I, I drowned. Yeah, me too. So yeah. I'm not, I just, you know, I, I quite like it now, but 
at the time, you know, Jan was doing it. So he, he, this is the first time I've seen him in the pool, first day of preseason. No word of a lie, right? He's doing lengths, and it's like Shamu at SeaWorld. <laughs> he is underwater, <laughs> and he's just coming up once, like 15 metres in, and then straight down. I'm like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> so I'm doing it, and I'm definitely not like Shamu. So I'm, I'm just, I can't even do it. A lot of the boys, like Gary Bradshaw, the young lad, said, oh, I can't swim. They did the sensible thing. But I just remember doing this priest swimming up and like nearly dying. <laughs> thinking, oh my god! Um, it was just oh, it was, it was embarrassing. Just thinking what the but, hell's going on here? I was supposed to be playing football. Yeah, and that, and that was before you're doing a, a double session every day. So he, he set his stall out very soon. But what what the funny thing for me was first day of preseason, he signed his boys, and you know let's not forget he made some good signings. To be fair to him, very good. But, yeah, but did actually he probably doesn't get the credit that he deserves Ashby, yeah. because he Ashby made some, was a mold design, some signs that changed the shape of the club. Um, but anyway, he uh, so he he signed these um, he signed the boys come in and he just I don't know he, he, there was something about him that you just I don't know it's it's hard to put it into words he, he was very intense but the boys that he brought in with him where you'd normally expect um, to say oh yeah he's great he's good at this and that I was like oh I remember saying to I think it was um, Appleby um, and he he was he was, he was his boy wasn't he. Yeah, it was his point. Been everywhere. I, mean, I was. Like, I remember distinctly saying, "What's he like?" He went, "He's a fucking dickhead," <laughs> right? and he was being. Like, and we're like, "What?" And he was like, "No, he's a dickhead." And I was like, "Oh, right, okay." So we're all like, "Well, so you know." And, and Richard didn't want to play football. No, you know, at this point, I, I think he he hit every injury under the sun to not play football. He did that. He did. Was, he uh, did very well at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, he didn't play a game, but I've got to say, he was. Like, when I did see him, he looked and I played against him. He's a very talented player. But for whatever reason, I felt that he didn't want to play football, yeah. and it was—I um, felt it was a waste of talent. But whether that was anything to do with Jan, it could easily. Have been it was always like because it, it was me. a mental aspect. <laughs> it was always something with Appleby um, that season. I remember it was like injury setback after setback, and when he came in, it was Mulby had um, talked him up like he was, you know, going to rip the division a new arsehole. Mm. Um But we never saw it. Yeah. No, no, he only ripped his own hamstring. <laughs> um, about three yeah. times. But it, yeah, but, but, recurring injuries. You know, like, it's probably all that swimming and all the double sessions. Exactly, yeah. And then there was um, no, there was other boys that came in, like say Ash came in, and correct me if I'm wrong, but did he sign Stuart? He Elliott did, yeah, well? yeah, yeah, yeah. Did. Stuart Green. In fact, Greg, uh, Greg Strong's the reason that happened because he, Greg, was telling him, look, you've signed me, which didn't really work out, and Greg's a big mate of mine. Um, yeah, he didn't work out often, but did he? He, would, yeah, he was captain of Motherwell. I would say, you've got to sign this boy here, Stuart Elliott. He's fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can get him, get him out now. They'll take the money. And obviously, that was a big... So, that was a big thing that Greg Strong did for Hull City, you know, behind the scenes, that, that really did work out well. And it didn't work out so well on the no, pitch. No. But, you know, he got sent off in his debut. Yeah. yeah dislocated his elbow. S- second game down at Bristol Rovers, he was sent off for... Um, first. Yeah. That, that's something I wanted to ask you about, actually, that Bristol Rovers game. Um because again, I was I was reading um, Mike Edwards is somebody obviously you played with I think at Notts County as well. My best mate, yeah. Yeah, um, but he said that um, Jan had called you all cheats at half time. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that was what Jan was like. Yeah, there was no holes barred, which is a good thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm again, I like they can't moan at that because that's what I wanted. I wanted you no know, filter. If we have you but... want no filter and be told yeah, the no truth, filter, and but... you don't want anybody pussyfooting around, sort of thing. You want to be told how it is. Yeah. yeah. We, you know, what, what I say about Jan is, I, I don't really think I knew how we were going to play. I mean, he wanted to play free up front first of mm. all, so he put me out wide of, of a three, left of a three. You know, I quite enjoyed it, and then he wasn't sure he wanted to change. Um, we got down to Bristol Rovers, got completely overrun. I think he pulled me at half time. I can't. Rem- I honestly can't remember. Yeah, did Simon Johnson uh, come on for you? Was was that the move? I, could, right. I remember him scoring. Possibly, yeah. Um, and uh, I th- it might maybe Greasy as well, actually. Me and Greasy, that got pulled at half time, and um, I remember us chatting about it afterwards. And you know, we, you know, where's this? Where's this going? You know, not so much for ourselves, but direction in the club. What? How are we getting out of this? We didn't really. Seemed we hadn't gone anywhere under Jan at the minute, and whilst that sounds crazy, it's in his second game. You know, you've got to remember he had I don't know eight games in the season before yeah. where. Mm. Um, so it was it was hard to see. It was difficult for him taking over that period. He didn't have a full eighteen games in one season, which would have helped him. So I do think it was harshly done by Bader. But I think the thing with Jan is because of his personality. If it's working, 
um, that's great. But if it's not, it's cancerous. And, and that was the, the problem that we had with it. So it, it didn't come as a particular surprise to me um, when, when it did come. Um, you know, they tried to sell me, I think, twice, once in a swap deal with Oxford and hadn't told me. And there was other things happening. And it just, you know, this, uh, you're hearing all these whispers. And no, it wasn't a happy camp. And, and ultimately, unfortunately, he paid the price for it. And I mean, once once he'd gone, obviously he had Billy Billy Russell took over again, didn't he? For until we got Peter Taylor. Yep, um, he just kept coming back. Really, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's always the caretaker, wanting to step it in for a few games so we get sorted. Um, how did you feel when you were obviously you talked about Peter Taylor a little bit before in the previously when we were talking? But how did you feel when he was named um, Hull City manager, and what what did you feel well, about it? Well, ultimately, he'd sold me a year and a half before. Yeah. So I kept hearing his name coming up. I didn't think it would happen. I didn't see him coming to Hull. So, you know, kind of out there to everyone, I'll, oh, it'll be fine. You know, blah, blah. And then when it happened, I was like, shit, this has really happened. <laughs> um, and as I say, the thing with Peter is, right, and like, I love Peter. I think his personality is brilliant. I thought he was a great coach. Um, I think that, um, you know, we, we got on well. I was, you know, I, I wasn't like I was late in my career. I didn't question anything. Somebody dropped me, you get on with it, get your head down and all that stuff. But Peter was, um, I just wasn't for him. He didn't fancy me as a, as a player. Um, I kept telling, I remember the whole Daily Mail rang me up. Oh, what do you think now he's got the job? And I, I think my official line was, oh, you know, that was in the Premier League. This is in League Two. It's different situations, different clubs. I've established myself a little bit more here and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I think deep down, well, I know deep down. I always knew I would be I'd be gone, and I maybe hope that Adam may have been able to protect me a little bit in terms of um, not not picking me because I would never I'd only ever want to be in Team yeah. Merit. But saying, well, actually, look, when he's been here, he's, he's done pretty well for the whole, particularly um, first season, and we can get him back to yeah, and, and we can, let's get him back to what we did, and he'll be a big mm. asset. Um, but equally, then Peter lied to me a few times, and I think one of my most Probably the most disappointing moment of my whole city career was I wanted to be involved in that. I'd been injured, uh, come back fit, training, and I wanted to be involved for the Darlington game. It was a big deal for me, um, big deal for the club. Yeah. And you know, for the last game at Boothley Park, um, had told me that I was on the bench. Uh, I will bring you back in, you'll be on the bench. And that meant a lot to me because not only did I want to get my place back, but I wanted to show him what I was about. And just didn't even tell me that. And then just got to the stadium and uh, said the subs and, you know, didn't put me in. It wasn't in the squad whatsoever. Um, and I just didn't take it well. For the, and it's very unlike me. You know, I'm a team player, but I remember that day being so disappointed that I just drove straight home to Hazel. The game kicked off. Before kickoff, I was, my head had gone and I just didn't handle it well. So um, it took me a few days to get over it. Got back in on the Monday just thought, right, I've got to give this a go. I've got to show him what I'm about. And did all right, you know, scored a lot of goals in reserves, played well um, for them. But it just didn't matter. You know, I would, I was being coached by Colin Murphy. And I don't know if you've ever come across Murph, but a fascinating character. Yeah, I've, heard, I've, heard, I've heard a few and, stories um, that Dino, Dino and uh, John Parkin have told on other well, podcasts about him, is, about Murph. He is an incredible character. But, um, Anyway, so, you know, him and we had him taking training. Steve Butler, who was uh, just the biggest yes man. Nice guy. I didn't particularly get on with. He didn't like me. Um, he was the big centre forward, you see, and I wasn't mm. that role that he played. So, it was, you know, for him, he was lower league, scored loads of goals, had a great career and didn't see me as being like him, what he wanted in a striker. So that was a big problem for me. Yeah. Um, and so I think I never really had him on my side and that definitely went against me. So when I had this, I wasn't in an environment where I just wasn't able to impress anyone. And um, I knew that there was, that was ultimately kind of, you know, I could have stayed there and, you know, I was on not nothing like they are now, but, you know, I was on good money at the time for, for me, but not huge, but the most I'd been on. And um, I think I was on 1500 pound a week and um, it sounds nothing now, but you know, it's a lot. That's no, a lot that's, that's, no, that's that's still is. time. I mean, that's, so, that's, yeah, that's something so, that you know a kid who who'd been playing at Leicester and and trying to break through and and had a couple of loan spells. That's that's big money for somebody in two thousand and one, isn't it? Yeah, 
So I, I could have stayed there. I, you know, I could stay there another two years. I could have uh, taken extra money on my bonuses. Mm. I could have. Um, you could have just sat in the reserves, you know, like, couldn't you? And yeah, I could have sat cared, there, didn't yeah. I? But I didn't want to. Yeah. And, and it's probably, it probably is a big regret of mine not staying there. Not for the money, but for leaving, just getting out and thinking I can't change the persona. I can't get you know, change the attitude here. Mm. Um, and I probably left a bit too soon. Um, I went to Northampton, but it is a real, you know, I remember being involved in the opening game of um, the new stadium. Yeah. Played the second half. Um, it was against Sunderland. And that, that was wasn't fantastic. It? Against Sunderland, yes, against yeah. Sunderland. Um, and like all of us, fell in love with Sarah Watmore. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, just <laughs> meant to be warming up at half time. I'm just looking at Sarah Watmore's, at Watmore's legs. Um, but... I don't think you'd be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it was a, I just remember it being the coldest night ever. I know. Um, she was wearing the, but yeah, but not very much. I wanted to be part of that. <laughs> I wanted to be, yeah. I wanted to be part of that, um, the future of the club. And I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to, to, to break through and break back in and convince Peter. And it was, it was a really, probably, a, like I say, a, a bit of a headstrong decision for me. But I didn't want to take money that I wasn't um, earning. You know, I wasn't playing, I wasn't doing stuff. So, you know, if I'd have stayed a bit longer, maybe convinced him, could have, would have, should have. But, you know, we've all got a story. So I, mean, you, you I, I don't to... look back and I wouldn't change anything, but it is what it is. You have to back yourself as a player anyway, don't you? You know, your career is short and if, you know, you need to go out and play games. And I, I don't think, you know, I don't really know. I've, I've never been a professional footballer, obviously. Um, but you, you can't look back at what is a short career, I think, and say should have done that at the time because you don't have that hindsight and, you know, maybe that time to sit back and say, what would be the right thing to do here? It, uh, does it feel very pressured when you're making those decisions? Because it's like, it's a short career. And particularly at that level, if you're not playing, you can quickly get forgotten and find yourself, you know, bouncing out of the league. Yeah, there's too many who have done that I over think, the years, haven't they? Just... Yeah. And I think I'd had such an affinity with the, with the club and the, and the city and they, for whatever reason, they took to me. Uh, the fans took to me and, um, you know, I made a lot of friends up here, which we all do. Um, but it was just, a, it did, it was a really special city to me. But you know what? In answer you to your question, you know, do you mull it over? Do you think too much? I don't think I ever did that. Whenever I left the club, it was the easiest decision in the world. I want to play football. I, I, you know, I don't want to be a fraud. I want to go and play football and earn my money and earn my place and show. If I can't do it here, I'll go and show somebody else. And it, as I say, it might have gone to my detriment throughout my career because. I subsequently left South End, not under a cloud, but I got stitched up for a contract there and they were getting promoted the following year to the championship. And I was, you know, I played 40, 40 games that year and was a big part of the squad and then became a forgotten man, really, because because of what the chairman did. But I wouldn't assign them because it was about principle. And, you know, I've kept that throughout my career. And I think that if you can honestly say that you've acted right yourself and done right and... and done everything you could then you've got no regrets and, and, and that's what I would honestly you know say yeah so I mean we could we could talk about you know your moves to Northampton and, and what have you but you know because we're city focused we and, and coverage being what it of was course, yeah. back back in those days you know we weren't really able to follow your career as much as you know perhaps we would like because you know, like you say you were a player um that City fans took to you and Alexander compared to Wagstaff and Chilton, I think, in the early days of the partnership. And even now, I think there's there's an affinity for that side, even though perhaps didn't do as well as you'd have all liked to have done. There is an affinity for, for a lot of those players. So it, to kind of sum things up, having reached the end of your time, at City, and it seems like we've covered a lot of negatives here. And I don't. <laughs> when I, but when I, what, 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 I want, what I want to say is, when I look back at that period, I don't necessarily think of it as a lot of negatives. There aren't many players in those squads that where I think didn't like him, waste uh, whatever you know. So if if we were to look back at your time at City, how do you feel about it? You know, do you have positive memories of it as a, a whole? Um, you know, oh, any regrets? Listen, without doubt. Without doubt, for me, my time at Hull City is the best of my career. You know, like nothing will ever beat my Premier League debut for Leicester, but nothing will ever beat the the feeling and the warmth of coming to this city, being taken under everyone's arms, you know, with such kind of nice it is and, you know, like just being part of the furniture straight away. And 
I'd never experienced that. That you know, I know it sounds like a cliche, but you know, I've got lifelong friends that. Uh, you know, my sponsor, um, I'll give him a plug, even though their business isn't going still, Tony Sturridge, you know, <laughs> from Beverly Pine, became, is a lifelong friend that I spoke to every week since I left City, and that there's 10 more of them, you know, and so I've got so much warmth for whole City, and so I, I, I don't see it as a negative in any way, shape or form. It's, it's great to talk about it. I love being part of the journey. I think that it's a very small part of the what I would call kind of whole city 2.0, you know, yes. after they've been locked out of the ground yes. yeah. and part of the rebirth. And I'm proud um, to have been a, a very, very small cog of that. Um, would I like to do more? Would I like to score more goals? Would I like to have stayed longer? Of course, we would, you know. I'd love to have played in the Premier League for whole city. It wasn't to be. It didn't happen. Um, but I'm proud that for people like Adam, and the hard work put in by him and, and, and the managers like Brian. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased for them that they got the club to where it deserved to be. I think, you know, I'm, I'm sat here now in an apartment in Hull looking at, I'm on the um, marina and, you know, none of this was here. And no. for me, a large part of this is due to the football team. The yeah. success of the Premier League football and the regeneration of the city that, you know, it's a beautiful city. You know, it used to be very much wherever you are in the country, oh, whole, you know, whole's the end of the earth. And, and it's not. I'm like, whenever anyone says that to me now, I'm like, go up there, go and see it. It's a beautiful city with beautiful areas. And, and I'll, as I say, I'm just forever thankful that I was a very, very small part in, in what was a, a, a great journey, you know, for me as a, a growing up and, and playing professional football here. I love that. I love to hear that. That's great. That's great stuff. Really is good. Um, so, I think now we've we, sorry, Rich, now we've we've covered quite a lot here. I think we'll go to um, we'll we'll end this little bit and then we'll come back and just kind of tie everything sure. up. If that's all right. So of course, mate. Yeah, back back in a couple of minutes. No worries, pal. Uh, we're back. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for joining us, Laurie. Um, Rich is now also back. Hi, Rich. Hello. Um, sorry, I, I cut you off there, Rich. I am very sorry about that. No, you're, <laughs> um, you're you, okay. You were, were going to start a question. Um, yeah. And I was just conscious of like when we come to edit the podcast, it's just very difficult. Yeah. Like, well, it's, it's, segment, so. <laughs> it's getting on. I don't want to take up too much of Laurie's time, but it's me neither, Be- really. Sorry. Because as I'd said, you know, it seemed like we covered a lot of negative memories. What I wanted to ask you um, was a couple of favourites. So if you had like a, a favourite game or a favourite goal that you remember scoring for City. Uh, definitely. I mean, it's a couple of favourite moments. Um, one, uh, well, de- obviously my debut goal was a, a big moment for me and mm. it was f- filled with emotion. Um, but actually a funny moment was my, I think my first home game was uh, possibly York at home. Oh, and yeah. I scored a penalty. Yeah, it was 4 0 um, that. I remember that. Who, was, who scored that free kick, Rich? David Lee. David Lee. That was yes, a great free David kick. Lee, that yes. was Beckham esque, that, wasn't it? Yeah. We had the haircut. Never, <laughs> never to be seen again. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's a good mate of mine as well. He's and he, you know, he's another one that's was a very talented boy. He was. And, uh, yeah, he was. Should have done more, really. Um, that was Terry Dolan's York going, yeah, as well, be, wasn't it? It was. It was, yeah. And we, I remember. So I knew Fetch from Leicester. Fetch had been on loan. And then we had this thing at Leicester where Fetch used to tell me in training that he could tell where anybody was going with a penalty. And um, <laughs> because, you know, if, you, if you're going to go across, you put one, your arm out one way. And if you're going across, you put the arm in front right, of it. Right. So I was like, OK, so, you know, if you, if you act it out, you can work that out okay. which way it is. But anyway, it's, and I thought about it for a couple of years after. And it was quite a natural thing. So, so anyway, so I, as I'm taking it, I don't know why. It's just one of the moments. I've put the ball down. I've grabbed it, put it down, ready to turn back around and take it. And it's just come in my head. This is Fetch. I can see Fetch looking at me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's just, you know, when you just think, I don't care if it comes to me afterwards. Like, you don't want it before. And I, I just kind of like froze from it. And I was thinking, oh, I don't want to, you can't miss on your home debut. <laughs> Record signing. <laughs> you know, it, you just don't want to miss um, all the fans behind me. And um, I scored and I didn't know what to say to him. So I was chatting after him. I went, I said, what, what are you thinking, Fetz? He goes, because you told me that about the penalties at Leicester. He went, yeah, I thought I told you that, so I thought you'd go up. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, I got lucky, you know, and scored. But uh, So that was a nice moment, you know, to, in front of the fans. And to, and to be honest, most of the photos that I've got from Hull City, which is not many, um, again, because I'm that old, it's before social media is what it is. <laughs> um, but most of the pictures I've got are from that goal, you know, as a, me with a fist pump in front of the, 
um, terraces, and that was, it was great. That, that, that's that, probably it? the pitch of the. Yeah, it was, and so that was that was a great moment. And I think, I mean, in terms of my best goal, my best goal for me personally was. Um, Ox- yeah, that's Oxford. what I wanted yeah. you to say. Um, it's such a good goal. Yeah. It was probably the best goal I scored in my yeah. career. Um, Rob Matthews was absolutely rinsing that, the other, them by the, the, the looks of it. Goal. Yeah, he, he yeah, was on fire. It was a nice game, goal, though. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what was, an, uh, what was a good um, moment, though. Later on in my career for Notts County, we played Peter Taylor's Crystal Palace and they put a full team out in the Carling Cup and I scored the winner yeah. against them. And I remember walking off at the end of the game. And Peter said, always do this with me. I said, because you never play me. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, like he had, a bit, he had a bit of a laugh and that. And fair play to him. At the end of the game, he gave me the match ball. He said, listen for you, well done. And, you know, so that's what, you know, to end it nicely with Peter, that's that's the kind of guy that he was off the pitch. Yeah, you know nice I mean? touch that. Um, that is a nice touch. That's a bit of class, isn't it? Um, yeah, he, he, and it, that, he was always that way. He always treated me well. You know, whatever, you know, not playing fine, but he, he was always... You know, treated me well, um, and probably my best game. I would say um, a couple of games that I enjoyed the most. Cheltenham at home, we won five one, and I think I said yeah, yeah, two yeah. Three I watched that game back um, last night. The highlights of it, anyway. Um, and I think I was involved in certainly a couple of goals and maybe scored one. Um, I remember Steve Cockrell on the sideline just saying, "Just <laughs> fucking <laughs> like because like, I was just absolutely taking the piss, and then. And then my other one was the first season, oh, North which away in the yeah, FA Cup. Um, five two. And um, I just remember Brian Little coming in front of everyone and said, Laurie, that right back will never recover from that <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> ripped him. Um, and it was just, you know, it's just funny things that stick in your head. But, you know, they're nice positive yeah, moments yeah. You know, that, I'll, that I'll never forget. Um, do you have a, like, you hear like when you do all the uh, you, you listen to all the podcasts and things like that. Footballers always have like great stories. Yeah. What, what what was like some of the characters that you've shared dressing dressing rooms with, Laurie? Has there been like like a standout moment that you just think this was like the the ultimate kind of prankster footballer, or whether it's somebody who always just loves to wind anybody up? Is there anybody like that that you've played with? Well, I played in a team. Unfortunately, it's not whole, but the, certainly Leicester. I obviously was. Fortunate or unfortunate, whichever way you look at it. But for me, definitely fortunate to play with Robbie Savage. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. some of the, I remember megging him in training one day and the boys, as a young lad, and the boys were absolutely like they're howling, it, like yeah. laughing and that. And they were all over it, as you can imagine. And <clears throat> he's come up to me and he's gone, oh, is that yours? And he's just pointing like over the way. He's like, is that yours? And I was like, what, what are you on about, Sam? Is that yours? <laughs> I said, Sam, I don't know what you're on about. He went, is that yours? I went, what? He went, ah, oh, no, it's my car. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just sad. Do you know what I mean? And people hated Sam, but I loved him and I still do. And um, because that he, he played the, you know, the clown. He played it and he played it superbly. He had a great career. He was a better player than people gave him credit for. Um, but, you know, Ma- Ma- he was better, he's best under Martin because Martin used to say, get the ball and yeah. give it. You can't play football. Just get the ball. Yeah, just, just pass it. You know, just pass it right. sideways to somebody else. Yeah, break pass play. it to Lenny or somebody or Muzzy yeah. or somebody that can do something. You know, so um, but yeah. So I mean, so he was always you know the joker of that dressing room. But whole um, it was difficult because it was such a a turnaround in in, yeah. in personnel. But I do remember um, thirteen of us, as you can imagine, thirteen new signings, all in the same hotel. How? Any Hull City player ever is allowed into the Ramada Jarvis or the Mercure as it is now, ever again, I will never know. Because, I mean, furnace, you got moves, um, people that definitely shouldn't be doing back to the hotel, coming back to the hotel. And I just, you know, there was so much every week, you know, something was going on in that hotel. And we, so much so that the club had to say to us in the end, like, you lot, after four months, you need to start finding a home. And, um, you know, we were just all in that, but it was great because it had that togetherness. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, and subsequ- I mean, I I was big pals with uh, Greasy in the end, and uh, that was my car school, Greasy and Mikey. So you can imagine, I've come from Leicester. I've got nothing flashy. I've got a <laughs> golf at that stage. So I've got a golf. So you know, I'm thinking oh, it's an alright car. Uh, get told by Greasy, going to pick me up on the Monday morning. So the Monday morning comes, 
he picked me up in the shittest old <laughs> red Fiesta you've ever seen. And I mean, it, it was, and it, I was like, what? You, what's this? He went, oh, save petrol on this, you know. And I was like, <laughs> okay, so that, that's the first day. So I've gone in on this old car and I'm thinking, oh my God, what's hit me here? Second day, it's Mikey's turn to drive. Mikey picked me up in a purple convertible <laughs> oh car like, with bricks, with bricks in the back. And I'm like, what is this? He went, oh, me and my dad are building my, um, my garage. And I was, I was just like, what the <laughs> fuck have I come to? Um, it was just, and then, I mean, Greasy's dad, well, just to end on a couple of funny stories, he was, I don't know if you guys, you know, I know a lot of people all know him, but it, Greasy's dad sadly passed away now, but um, just the biggest character at that time. You know, I, I, I come in to the players' bar, and I used to love that, you know, just going in the players' bar and you've got other people, you can talk to some fans and all that stuff, and not necessarily your own family, but other people as well. And um, he came up to me one day, uh, or one of the first games, he went, you don't know who I am, do you? And I went, uh, no. And he went, I'm our Mark, Dad. <laughs> and I was like, the fuck is our Mark? And he was like, our Mark, you know our Mark. Best player at this club. <laughs> right? yeah. And then Adam Pearson walks in behind me and no word of a lie, I've heard him go, uh, Adam, Adam, I'm our Mark, Dad. He's the best player at this club. He should be your captain. <laughs> <laughs> and just, and I was just like, what? Seriously, what have I walked into here? This is just, you know, it was it was unlike anything I'd ever watched before. But as I said, I've got lifelong friends from City. Greasy is a good mate of mine, a very good mate of mine. Mike is my best mate. Um, and we still do a lot of work together to this day. So he, um, I, I'm, you know, to answer your question, going back to some negative, yeah, there's naturally some disappointments that it could have been better. Um, but it, it will always be a, uh, a really a positive period in my life and something I'm very proud of and proud to have, have worn the colours and, and um, you know, my little boy is, loves his football um, and he's always asking me questions about the whole city and about this. But as I say, I'm that old, you don't get that much footage. You're going to get a few goals here and there. So I don't think he's going to lose it. <laughs> I think he just thinks I'm filling his head with See that grainy, grainy footage on YouTube? That's me, son. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see that VHS? That's, it, yeah. that's me. VHS yeah, ripped off into Tiger's tube. Um, um, but um, yeah, so I, I think that you know, in terms of the characters and that, that was it. Um, although I will finish on one story. Yeah, no, absolutely. Got go, time. Go um, so when I when I retired from, um, we both live in Nottingham. I retired from Notts County, and um, I thought I was going to work at Forest. So I, I worked at Forest for four years. So I was going in every morning about seven o'clock. Mikey was still in bed, so I stole his car key one day. I thought, if his car's on the drive, I'll put it on the road. And if it's on the road every morning, I'll put it on the driveway. So I did this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And like, if you'd have had like a camera on there, you'd have seen me like giggling like a little <laughs> school kid. So on the Friday, he calls me up and he goes, very funny. This year. I was like, what? What, what are you on about? Greeting, like trying to be serious. He's like, I know what you've been doing. Well, very brilliant. Where, where is it? You couldn't write it. Somebody <laughs> owns the car on the Friday. Like, 16 and a half grand joke. That's brilliant. And so, yeah, so I don't know. Really <laughs> it doesn't go well. How do you top that one? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, no, so lots of positive memories. And uh, so I love this. I appreciate talking to you. It's been great to reminisce about you know a lot of yeah really enjoyed it Ple- pleasure all hours i think rich to be honest isn't it the, yeah the, absolutely the yeah. 15 year olds in us are just buzzing and fanboying about speaking to a <laughs> player that we probably have on the back of our shirts really but um Laurie, it's been absolutely brilliant a privilege to uh to speak to you and thanks so much for agreeing to speak to both of us on this anytime um, i'm much. sure we'll, we'll be in touch at, at some point if we make it into a season two and maybe talk about more current things once the football starts to to, to happen again well listen it can only it can only go <laughs> off as well, yeah. Don't worry. you've Absolutely. not listened to the first two episodes have you <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's great stuff right um we want right. to thank our guest laurie dudfield thanks and, laurie um, if you uh if you go onto the social medias we're on um the Tigers, Tigers, blah, blah, blah is the podcast, but it's at Tigers Podcast um, on uh, Facebook and it's on uh, at Tigers Blah on Twitter. So get involved on those channels. Again, thank you, Laurie. And then it's goodbye from me and Rich. Yeah, goodbye from me. Thanks, Cheers, Laurie. Go steady. Thanks, thanks a lot. Speak See to you again soon. Bye. Cheers.